Yo Yankees fans, how's it going? This is Felix from MLYNews.com, on like almost us, like always. So, we have seen Darvish has agreed to a deal with the Cubs. If you've been paying attention to my previous videos, I even said that the Red Sox had the money to dump on Darvish. And I said he might jump the gun if the Red Sox offer one more year and make it six years. What do you know, I wasn't that far off because the Cubs offered him six years around $25 million. About $20 million less than I predicted. I was going around five years, $125 million. But he got six years, $126. I think the six years is an option. Like I said in my previous video, the six year was going to be an option if the Red Sox were going after Darvish, obviously. If... Martinez fell through. They could have easily got him, folks. The Red Sox are still a threat in, let's say, obtaining a player that's going to boost their chances in repeating in winning the AL East. As of now, the New York Yankees are a wild card team. The New York Yankees are doing, as of now, the same mistake they made last year entering the 2017 season by not obtaining an ace or a pitcher that's going to overpower hitters, get you those strikeouts, carry your team, get on a hot streak. They haven't really obtained a pitcher like that. Like I said, I have videos about Sonny Gray and today a uh, freelance analyst his name is Zachary Abate. He said, he repeated what I've been saying. This guy is very intelligent. I suggest you follow him on Twitter. He said this. I see some Yankees fans dismissing Sonny Gray's poor stretch with the team last season as a result of no run support. While it's true that Gray got little support, he also wasn't that good. Then he lists a whole bunch of bad stats and then he says, Yankees need him to do better in 2018. Here's the reason why Sonny Gray is going to be Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray does not overpower hitters. He's just going to give you about 150 strikeouts per season. He is a great number three starter in your rotation. But he's not that ace that the Yankees need. He's not that pitcher that the Yankees need to come in first in the AL East. As of now, the Yankees are a wild card team. People keep saying, oh, the Yankees are an offensive juggernaut. That doesn't work. History shows that pitching wins you ball games. History shows when you stack your lineup offensively, it's going to slow you down. Everybody's going to wait for that big two run home run or a Three run home run, grand slam, etc. And you're going to slow down your offense. So, as of now, I hate saying this. The New York Yankees are a wild card team. I can't see how they're going to topple the Boston Red Sox with the great pitching that they have. Obviously, they have a ton of moves to make still. Supposedly, the Yankees have too, but we're not seeing that. If you ask me, the New York Mets have made more moves, obviously, than the New York Yankees this offseason. Sure, shipping off Headley was great, uh, freeing up salary space, but we really didn't see anything after that. Obviously, John Carlos Stanton fell on Cashman's lap. And again, it had to change their plans and what they were doing. Obviously, when Otani signed with the Angels, that also changed their plans. So the Yankees have to focus. A uh, name out there is Patrick Corbin of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So you have to ask yourself this question. What pitcher out there that's available via free agency is going to overpower hitters? Is going to be supposedly your ace or go-to guy to stop the bleeding or to get on a hot streak? Honestly, the only pitcher that's still available that will give you that power arm is uh, Jake Arrieta. The Cubs almost signed him. I guess this guy got greedy because they were offering, 
Arietta, the same deal. They offered Darvish six years, one hundred twenty-six million. That's great if you ask me, considering that Jake is about thirty-one years old or something like that. So if you ask me, the only starting pitcher available via free agency that can get you those strikeouts, that can overpower batters, is Arietta. Cobb, no, that's going in reverse. Cobb barely gets strikeouts. The Yankees have been missing that for quite a while. Sure, we have Severino, but we don't know what we're getting with him. We don't know if he's going to be consistent. The Yankees have been missing that starting pitcher that can give you over 200 strikeouts per season. This is the mistake they made not trading for Verlander. And I keep hearing people, oh, they were going to go up the luxury tax or whatever. Trust me, if Brian Cashman wanted Verlander, he would have got it done. He would have moved the contracts to get it done. This is why I pushed so hard for Verlander when he was available. I was pushing for it before the start of the 2017 season. Then again, near the trade deadline and after. So take the Red Sox for an example. They have starting pitching that can get you over 200 strikeouts per season. Now, analyze the Yankees starting rotation. You only have one player that's going to give you over 200 strikeouts per season, and that's Luis Severino. With Tanaka, you're going to get close but it's going to range between 180 to 190. Just look at Chris Sale's numbers. Those are video game numbers. The dude had over 300 strikeouts. That's insane. They also have David Price. So imagine the, that the Red Sox obtain another power arm and add them to their rotation. Even if they don't achieve over 200 strikeouts per season. They're going to have a great starting rotation. And like I said, as of now, the Yankees are a wild card team. In my opinion, realistically, the best option out there is for the Yankees to make a trade and obtain a player like Chris Archer. See, that's a picture that the Yankees needed to give up Caprillion and all those players for. Not a Sonny Gray type. Sonny Gray and Chris Archer both have similar win percentage. They're basically the same when it comes to wins and losses. But what separates them is their velocity, their strikeout rates, other numbers. See, this is why I think the Yankees went backwards in that Sonny Gray deal. I know I keep mentioning him, but really, this is what is setting the Yankees back. They need that pitcher that's going to give them over 200 strikeouts per season. You can't bank on Luis Severino. I'm guessing he's going to duplicate those numbers and maybe be better, but who knows? You need another power arm in your rotation. So, other rumors out there. I heard that the Mets are interested in Jacoby Ellsbury. I also heard... The Phillies are also interested in Jacoby Ellsbury. These teams are starting to realize that if they do trade for Jacoby Ellsbury, they might get some prospects in return, obviously, as of now. Again, like I said, Jacoby Ellsbury will not be on the New York Yankees to start 2018. I don't know how Cashman is going to move him at this point. I was told in an email that... Him being shipped out of New York was imminent. That same source told me because Scott Boris is holding up the market. We haven't seen that yet. But at that time frame, we saw the Milwaukee Brewers obtain two center fielders in Yelich and Kane. So I guess at that time frame, his intel was that the Brewers were going to obtain a center fielder via trade or free agency, which they did. And I'm guessing Jacoby Ellsbury, that deal almost happened. 
and they were choosing between those two players. They were thinking, do we give up these prospects for Yelich or get prospects in return in training for an Ellsbury? So, again, that's what that whole Jacoby Ellsbury is out of New York being imminent thing was all about. He's still gone from New York. That's Brian Cashman's number one priority. So, yeah, at this point, I'll be shocked if Jacoby Ellsbury remains on the Yankees. I'll be completely shocked. And I will also be shocked if the Yankees do not trade or sign a pitcher via free agency. I don't know what this talk is about, about Chad Green going into spring training to be a starting pitcher. I don't know if the Yankees should do that. I think they should give the shot to Luis Sessa, keep uh, Chad Green in the bullpen. He has closer material, setup man material. So, hey, you ask me, as of now, I don't know what the Yankees are doing. If you ask me, they're taking their time way too much. And like we saw, we saw you Darvish sign with the Cubs. Supposedly, Michael K said that the Yankees offered you Darvish that same kind of contract, but for five years. I guess he was looking for that extra year. But if you ask me, the Yankees could have obtained you Darvish easily by moving a couple of contracts. So, like I said, if you ask me, the Yankees are taking their time. They might lose out on some players, but who knows? Let's see what the Yankees have in store. There's still time. Remember, at this time, around 2004, Alex Rodriguez was traded to the New York Yankees. So, who knows? Let's see. So, Yankees fans, this has been Felix from NYNews.com. You know that NYYNews.com brings you Yankees news and rumors first. Share, like, and subscribe. I will share, like, and subscribe.